Charlie Cox returns as the Devil of Hell's Kitchen, but it's John Bernthal's Punisher that everyone's talking about. It's season two of the groundbreaking Netflix series, Marvel's Daredevil. Spoiler-free review. All right, normally this is where I say spoiler warning, but like I said, I'm trying to keep this spoiler free for you. I've been up the past couple of days. I've been up late. I'm sure I look horrible, but I wanted to tear through as much of this season as possible to try and give you guys a good insight into what to expect if you haven't seen it. And if you haven't seen it, why haven't you? This is amazing. They have done an incredible job. And Netflix really has continued to set the bar high. When I say groundbreaking uh, uh, series, I really mean that. What they did with the first Daredevil season was incredible. Then they brought in Jessica Jones and raised the bar even higher with a different style of storytelling, but still the same intensity, the same quality. Here they are raising the bar again with camera work, with story, with performances, really just treating the fans to what we have wanted to see, but still keeping this such an accessible series for people that might be unfamiliar with the comic books or the characters. Um, now the show does start a little slow, and it makes sense why they do. There has been events. In the first season, they were able to kind of jump right into things and then bring us along with it. Here, they're acknowledging the past events, um, the, the deal with Wilson Fisk, and the effects that that has had on Nelson and Murdoch uh, as, as a, a, a legal, as their legal office, they're responsible for bringing down Wilson Fisk. And there have been positive results for that. They are busier, they've got great clientele, but of course they're still serving the people of the community. So it's not like this is really money-making stuff, but they've established a reputation. Um, there is a bit of a sequence. Getting used to seeing uh, Charlie Cox in the Daredevil outfit, I have to say, does take a little bit. Not too long, but it takes a little getting used to. I think they're a little rough when they first bring him back, trying to establish the new look, the new approach that he is having. And I think they might, again, it's a little slow, it's a little rough starting, but it does pick up quickly and it does move on. And, and for me, I think the fact that the costume that he had in the last season, that kind of black ninja costume, worked really well in the confines of the series. It made sense that this is something that somebody just threw on. It takes a moment for us to get back into, now he is wearing a more official, like, superhero costume outfit. Um, now, it's not just, you know, spandex. Uh, as we know, Melvin had made him a nice armored suit, and that continues on with this. And it makes sense, again, very quickly on of why he does need this upgraded in his armor, upgraded in his outfit, especially once we are introduced to the Punisher. And the sequences between them are astounding. Really, uh, John Bernthal has brought it and brought it big time. He inhabits this character. His every move, his every speech really just grounds us right into the reality, the depth, and really the pain that is going on within this character. All of that in seconds and flashes. His ability to bring this character to life like I said, this is what people are going to be talking about, and this is why there already has been the discussion of doing a sort of spin-off series with him. That may, that may not happen, but once you watch this, you can see why all of that talk is going on. The fight sequences, in the meantime, are awesome. They have taken a lot of the stuff from the first level and really built it up. And I think one of the more challenging aspects what they were able to pull off really well was showing a difference in styles of fighting. Um, most pronouncedly, when Daredevil and Punisher go at each other. I'm not spoiling anything. We know this is going to happen. I'm not going to go into the whys and wherefores, but I do want to talk about the differences in style that we're fighting. We have um, Daredevil. You know, we have Charlie Cox's character who is... You know, he, he's blind, he's got a much more of a martial arts, sort of a bigger kind of fluid movement type of thing, whereas the Punisher is all very direct, efficiency of motion in everything that he is doing, the level of brutality that he is bringing to it. 
whereas you have Daredevil who is fighting them off, brutal, harsh, but not willing to kill, whereas you see with Punisher, there is that other level that he may be diving into, he may be holding back depending on the situation, but he really brings that difference, and it's great to see a difference of fighting styles on camera. Very often when you have people fight, they're fighting in the same way, the same type of martial arts kicks, the same types of moves. Here you can really see the difference between the style of the character's action, the style of their fighting, and it really brings up and brings a really nice second level onto this. Um, and like I said, Bernthal's performance is amazing. I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but I will say the fourth episode of Penny and Dime, I rewatched it twice back to back. The depth that Burnfall brings into this from the highs to the lows, the brutality, the, the sadness, the heartache that is inhabiting that drives Frank Castle is astounding and, and really Burnfall needs to get some some acknowledgement for this on, on a professional level. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm talking, there should be at least some sort of Emmy nod in this because he really does bring that level of performance. Now, cinematography wise, is incredible. And they, they've really continued to bring this out. But one of the nice things with Netflix is because of the way the series are set up because they, they, they all throw them all out at once at you. They have spent time on each individual episode, on each individual shot to frame it like a picture. And the color palettes that they use in this, again, much like season one, what they carried in through Jessica Jones continues on to this. Even in the dark alley where, where everything is all very shadow, you have these splashes of color in the background, an, an overshade of, of yellow here with a splash of purple up here. Um, the greens that they used very efficiently in the, in the first one as well continues to move. Nothing is dark, nothing is plain. Even in, like I said, the shadowy areas, there are these splashes of color, of life, of vibrancy that not only grab our eye, but give a whole different level, a different visceral feel to each, uh, each scene, each, each moment in front of the camera. Uh, even to the point where you've got a street scene which is all very monochromatic and then you have the red brake lights come across the scene, is just stands out and just adds a beautiful layer. This, this is what camera work is supposed to be. This is where you can tell when people really spend time painting a picture and that is what film really is it's a sequence of pictures and when done properly it pulls us in it gives us a whole emotional feel even before the dialogue even before the characters come in and do their thing the scene itself sets the mood and sets the emotion and they have done this really well and continue to do this so overall, like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I will try and do maybe some spoiler uh, uh, reviews later on. Electra, the lady who's playing Electra, is amazing as well. I mean, really, all of the characters in this, even some of the complaints that were had about uh, some of the acting of the first characters, really, I think that's aside. Everybody in this brings their A game. Uh, and I think overall, it's just an incredible incredible uh, series. Yeah, there's some ups and downs. Yes, nothing is perfect. Uh, but like I said, overall, this is groundbreaking. This is the type of, of show that we want more of. If Netflix would keep pouring this out, I know they're doing two a year. <laughs> I could already say, man, do three, do four, I don't care. Just keep bringing it, keep bringing characters in, keep reflecting back to the world around us, and we will eat it up constantly. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. See the show. If you haven't seen the show, go do it right now. If you have seen it, man, we're all just having a great time together. Um, like I said, I will try and come back later on, maybe do a bit more of a, a, a spoiler review with some certain sections and certain points. Uh, but overall, like I said, if you haven't seen the show, go and catch it right now. You would be missing. You would be very sad if you missed this. Anyway, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm D. You guys can catch me on Twitter. I'm at Darren Jakes. 
Certainly feel free to press like, subscribe, comment in the section below as usual. That's going to be it. Uh, Black Sales Review will be coming up, and then we've got Walking Dead. And this Friday, we have Batman v Superman. I know this is a Marvel review, and I'm talking DC. We don't care. This is an incredible time to be alive if you are a comic book fan. They're making incredible stuff, and we should all, all of us, should be super thrilled that we get to watch it, and we get to be part of it. That's it. I'm D. I'm out of here. You guys take care. Bye.